Okay, you know, even with COVID, it has been a banner year for animation. I mean, I mean, the the, the five nominees are completely different movies, yeah. mm -hmm. telling different stories. Mm -hmm. Yet, you know, the five movies are actually, you know, I would say widening understanding of the world around us in cultural terms. How do you feel about that? I guess you love that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting. Oh, sorry, you need a mic. Oh, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, it's exciting. I think we're all just, you know, honored just to be amongst such an awesome and amazing group of films. And uh, yeah, it feels like every year we keep expanding what animation can be, you know, yeah. uh, not necessarily for us, but for, I think, the, the you know, the public or moviegoers. And, and so I think that's, uh, and this year is very indicative of, you know, a very high level of great films. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And in your case, I mean, you have to submerge yourself in a different culture. How it was? How 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 many years did it take the movie to reach the screen? <laughs> it took about um, five years for the movie to get to the screen, and we took a number of uh, research trips to the region, to Southeast Asia, and because we we're talking about such a big region, yeah. to understand what the commonalities are, and then think about how that inspires the film, how that is sort of in the DNA of a really a fictional story that we tell inspired by the region. So it took quite a few years and over 430 of our closest friends worked on it. Wow. <laughs> how many production babies did you have in this one? Oh, I didn't count many, them, but we had a lot. No, <laughs> probably like 20 or 30. Oh, we yeah. Oh, we have so many. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? There was a lot of production wow. A whole new generation of uh, you know, animators, mm -hmm. mostly. <laughs> You know, and also one, one great thing about the, the film is that you don't have a damsel in distress. That is changing. That's one of the big cultural changes. It's that now you have proactive, proactive uh, female characters carrying the, the whole narration over their shoulders. Mm -hmm. I think from the beginning we were excited about Raya being a warrior and a badass. And, <laughs> you know, love was never one of her priorities. A uh, relationship was never one of her priorities. She had a much bigger things to, to deal with. And also, I have to add, there were actually three female leads in the film, yes, all of yeah. them interesting, nuanced characters with flaws, with a hero's journey to, to go on, yes. and I'm really, really proud of that, really proud of that. Well, being a father, I have a, a boy and a girl, and the girl is 10 years old, and she's very gung-ho, mm -hmm. so she was so engaged by the, the nature of Raya, you know, going forward, and you know, basically taking uh, the, uh, the, nar the narrative forward by herself. I mean, that, I think that's, that's the biggest difference between previous generations. It's not only about interesting female characters, but also, you know, characters are driving uh, the story forward. It's uh, really working on this story and working with these incredible minds was one of the greatest gifts ever. I am new to the Disney animation universe and just getting to experience how a story is built, the amount of thought and love that goes into every single thing and building our characters and building our themes. Uh, it, it really was just such an incredible gift to be a part of this production. How did it affect you when you realized that the movie was going to have a hybrid uh, release? Because, you know, it, it was supposed to go on theaters and then we have COVID. It was a bummer. It was kind of depressing. How did you manage that? I mean, you've been working so, was, for so many years. We were excited because it, it was just when movie theaters were opening up. And all of a sudden we had two avenues for people to watch the movie. And the people who felt comfortable and were able to go out to theaters were able to see big screen with loud sound and enjoy it, you know, in a dark room. But the people who weren't, and there were many people who yeah. were not able to do that, were able to see it at home, were able to see it with their families, were able to share it with their friends, to watch it over and over again. So I, we like to think that we got the best of both worlds. Well, you were reaching a wider audience than going straight, either to one platform or to or only to cinemas, I guess. We also, we felt like it. Uh, it's a film that talks about the, the, the issues that we're having in the moment, particularly in the moment of COVID as well yeah. of kind of having to come together across, you know, from our individual homes is how we made it, but across the divide to do something for to make our world a better place. So it was important to us that people see the movie no matter what medium they saw it yeah, in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, two last questions. Look at, this is the guy who's basically <laughs> nodding. You know, he's, he's, he's the one. Charge. Yeah, yeah he's, he's the uh, time police. Okay. Um, who are you dreaming of bumping into the red carpet? Is there someone you say, hey, 
Uh, I guess for me it would have been Steven Spielberg, and uh, I didn't get a chance to bump into him, but, you know, the, the whole season isn't over yet, so who knows? Maybe. <laughs> we got more time. <laughs> we got more time. Yeah. 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 You, have a, you will have a lot of yeah. chances, I guess. Yeah. How about you? Well, actually, I, I wanted to talk to Jane Campion because I'm, I've been a huge fan for a very, very long time, and I thought Power of the Dog was brilliant. She wasn't here today, but she will because she's still in quarantine, having just come from New Zealand. I sat with a lot of Power of the Dog oh. people at the table, which was lovely. But then also I had a chance to chat for a minute with Billie Eilish, and I thought that was she's just a lovely, lovely young woman. Oh, yeah, absolutely. How old are you, Carlos? Uh, I will say Guillermo del Toro. <laughs> uh, and I actually got to meet him today. And I got his number. Uh, which ah, oh. muy bien. No, he's he's he's. Been <laughs> I'm kidding. He's been a, a big inspiration for forever for me. Um, and we're both from Mexico, and there's just lots of connections there. And to be able today, we got to sit on table and talk for a little bit. And he asked a bunch of questions about my previous movies and Raya. Wow. And he was very uh, engaged, and it was incredible. That's so cool. So a uh, final final question by for me. Okay. He's looking at me. He has the laser eyes. Um, you know, this year the Academy will give a, a award, which is not an Oscar, to popular films, and you know the audience will vote. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask you about that because you are on the race. <laughs> But you know, the thing is, if you could pick a, a movie that had an impact when you were growing up mm. to give your own personal award, which one could could be? Mm. I will say just any movie ever. Yeah, any yeah. movie. For me, it was Cinema Paradiso. It doesn't Paradiso. have to be a good film anyway. It's mm. a movie that affected you somehow. For me, it was Cinema Paradiso. Mm. Yeah. How about you? Uh, yeah. for, for me, it was Jaws. I saw oh. Jaws when I was six, which I don't know if that's right. But, I, you know, <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, I probably wouldn't let my kids when they were six see it. But um, it was the first film that I... I had heard about and desperately, yeah. desperately wanted to see, and I begged and begged and begged my mom and dad to allow, you know, uh, my aunt to take me. She was in high school at the time, and when that head like came out of the boat and everybody jumped in the theater, I, that's that was power it. Of cinema, of that course. was the power of cinema, yeah, and that's it. Absolutely. That was it for me. I showed the film to my kids, and at the end, my daughter, and she was like five years old. Mm -hmm. I know it's kind of extreme. Hey, no, you know, no I'm judging here, off. man. No judging. And she said, ah, you know, the, sh the, the shark wasn't real because he did not blink. And I was like, darling, you know, sharks don't blink right. at all. And she was like, oh, it was real. <laughs> <laughs> so how about you? Well, for me, it's a combination, I think, of E.T. and... Um, And uh, Ingmar Bergman's films, actually, Scenes from a Marriage was the one. It was, there was something it's, about... It's an interesting mix. It's interesting. <laughs> I, I grew up in Israel, and we, our, yeah. our influences were different. But there was something about trying to cross between those two things that has always interested me. It's like, wow. <laughs> I was thinking about the combination. That was... That was <laughs> you're like, right. persona plus, I don't know, shots. Uh, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to meet you guys. And See you, see you next time on the red carpet. I'll be there. Sounds good. Thank I'll you. I'll be there. Thank I'm doing so my much. usual shtick, but I'll be there. All right. Thank you.